to becoming an operator inside the IBW, getting started and building a career within the union. And if your goal is to become a lineman apprentice and become a lineman, this is a great place to start. If you have operator experience, you have certifications like your class A CDL, your crane certifications and what other certifications that are good to have in the operator's world. Heavy equipment operators make a lot of the time the same amount as an IBW journeyman lineman, which is, can be a lot of money. Welcome to episode 14 of CTQ. CTQ is a segment I do on this channel called Cruise the Questions. This is where I take your guys' questions that you guys submit to me either via email or on Instagram or on TikTok. I take your guys' questions and I put them in my portfolio of questions and I answer them here for you guys. Now, the reason for doing this is a lot of you guys have specific questions that either pertain to the lineman trade or plumber's trade or really any one of these various trades out here that you're looking or want to get started in, but you're not sure who to ask. Now, if I don't know an answer to your question, I will reach out to somebody I know because I know a lot of people in the trades and I will get those questions answered and I'll answer them here for you guys. If you have a question, someone probably has a same question or a very similar question. And this way I can help you guys when you guys are on your journey to fulfilling a career in the skilled trades. So with that being said, let's hop into today's questions. There's actually six questions here, and this is from one guy. This guy, Chad, emailed me looking to become an operator at the IBW, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. He wants to see what it kind of takes and what it's like to become an operator. Now, inside the IBW, there are a handful of diff different classifications that you can have a career in. Um, being a lineman is obviously a very big one. Electrician is another one. An operator is one. A substation technician is one. There's welders. There's traffic uh, signal people. There's a handful of the variety of a variety of different positions or occupations you can have inside the IBW. Today, I want to talk about becoming operator. What I mean talking about an operator is like being able is like running equipment on a lineman crew. Um, that's an operator that I can think of. Every time I've ever worked in lineman trade with an operator, that's what they do. They operate cranes, they operate, you know, heavy equipment, they have their class A CDL, so they they drive semi trucks around with low boys hauling equipment around. Um, they run tensioners and wire pullers on big transmission jobs. They really can run any piece of equipment that we have out in the field, except for obviously like a bucket truck going up in the bucket and like working because you're not a lineman or an apprentice lineman, you are an operator. So basically all your duties are on the ground. So let's hop to his questions. Hopefully you guys can learn from these questions. Maybe you are looking to become an operator or building a career as an operator within the IBW. These questions might be able to help you start on that path. Question number one, I have, what are operators able to do? I understand running specialized equipment, but does that include the digger derricks? So yes, operators are for the most part, like I was saying, able to do almost anything on the ground. Now, when it comes to the lineman trade, and he asked a question about this a little bit later on, is operators have different classifications. You can have a heavy equipment operator, you can have just a regular equipment operator. Those are basically the two different classifications within the lineman trade as an operator in IBW. And basically what the difference between those are the kind of equipment you can operate. You know, big, heavy, what does your crane certification, what tonnage of crane can you operate? Um, and then like if you're a heavy equipment operator, you're able to run specific line equipment, machinery like wire tensioners or the wire pullers. Um, these are like very specific uh, machines that we use in the lineman in the line trade when we're doing wire pulls, pulling in new wire on either transmission jobs or distribution jobs. Operators, heavy equipment operators, are usually able to do that. Now he's asking, does it include running a digger derrick? 
every time I've ever worked with an operator, I've always assumed that they know how to run a digger derrick, whether they are a heavy equipment operator or just a regular equipment operator. As a lineman, as when I was an apprentice and when I was a groundman, you know, technically as a groundman, you're only supposed to, or you're allowed to run a forklift by yourself. Otherwise, everything you do as a groundman or an apprentice is supposed to be under direct journeyman supervision. But digger derricks are pretty easy to operate, in my opinion. Uh, you know, you're showed a few times, you know, and you're able to operate them and run them and figure out the controls. And then it's pretty easy. If you are a equipment, if you're an operator, you've had operator experience, then it should only take you one or two times to kind of figure out how to operate and run a digger derrick. So yes, I would say that includes running a digger derrick. Now, I was kind of uh, curious on some of these questions. So I had called up um, a dispatcher, a lady who is very familiar with these different roles and positions within the IBW and what they can and can kind of do. And she said that, yes, most operators you should, are able to or should be able to or are supposed to be able to run a digger derrick. So, yes, operators are able to basically run, depending on your classification, any piece of machinery, including a digger derrick. Question number two, he asks, can operators also do handwork, like framing poles and making up transformers before they go in the air? From a personal standpoint, I say yes. But when it comes to the union and the IBW, if you get called out as an operator, your job description is to be able to run equipment. And that's kind of what you're supposed to do. Most line crews you'd work on as an operator, if you're on a distribution crew or doing distribution work or even transmission, small transmission jobs, I say, yes, you're able to do things like framing poles and making up transformers and that kind of stuff. If you're able to do that as an operator, that's awesome. Uh, that's, you know, more of a, a groundman or apprentice or even the lineman's job that's in their scope of work. But if you're on a crew and that's part of doing, you're able to do that kind of stuff, then I think by all means, yes, you're able to do that. It's just, you can kind of get in a gray area when it comes to getting called out as an operator for a job your job is to operate equipment and machinery and not do that kind of work. Because previously in the union, you know, working in the IBW, like if you get called out as an operator, your job is to operate. If you get called out as a groundman, your job is to be a groundman and do groundman responsibilities. Um, if you get called out as a truck driver, you're supposed to drive truck. And that's why they have these different positions is so that you, whatever job you get called out as, whatever position classification, that's your job title, that's what you're supposed to do. That doesn't mean you aren't able to or won't be able to do like other kinds of work. If you're on a crew and you guys are doing the whole scope of work, framing poles, setting poles, pulling in wire, and you're a, you know an operator that knows how to do all that kind of stuff, then I think by any means that you should be able to do that. Question number three. I've seen two separate classifications for operators. One is heavy equipment and the other is line equipment. Can you break those down individually and highlight the differences? So like I was saying a little bit earlier, there are two separate classifications. You have heavy equipment operator and you'll have equipment operator. And the main difference is as a heavy equipment operator, you do get paid more. A lot of places uh, out of the union hall you get paid the same amount as a journeyman lineman as a heavy equipment operator. And from my understanding, what I've learned, I've talked to a few different people, heavy equipment operators are the ones who have a um, N, uh, N, double C, N triple CO crane certifications over a certain tonnage. So you're able to run a higher tonnage crane um, and you're able to operate, like I was saying earlier, wire tensioners, wire pullers for like big transmission jobs. And you're able to run these specific line equipment pieces of machinery. Now, that will make you as a heavy equipment operator. Then you'll have just an equipment operator and they get paid less than a heavy equipment operator. And equipment operators are usually the ones who are just like, they're able to run most pieces of equipment 
Mainly, you have your Class A CDL with no restrictions, and so you're able to drive semis. You're able to drive trucks around if you need to, if they need you to. You're able to run these different pieces of equipment, like you know, if there's a skid steer or you know, a water truck or an excavator or a backhoe, and you know, pieces of equipment like that. It's mainly what just an equipment operator is um, considered, and that's kind of the main differences between a heavy equipment and just, a, just an equipment operator is the pay difference and you're able to run a lot more pieces of equipment specific to the lineman trade as a heavy equipment operator. And then as an equipment operator, you're just kind of running basic pieces of machinery. Now, the other difference is what I learned is if you want to transfer from, you know, if you're an operator like this guy is an operator, he's been operated for a long time, non-union, and that's all he knows, but he wants to get on the union side to start building retirement, get paid better, get better benefits, um, be able to work on these different jobs and the kinds of things in alignment trade is you have to kind of, if you want to get into the union, I don't know where he's from. I don't know what local's closest to him, if he even cares, but you would have to call the local union hall that you're closest to or where you want to work out of and talk to one of the, the um, dispatchers or the business uh, managers at that union hall and tell them, hey, I'm an operator. I have 10, 15, however many years of experience as an operator. I want to join the IBW as an operator. And mainly what they'll do is they'll either set up some sort of like phone call meeting or an in-person meeting if you're able to. And they'll kind of ask you a few questions. They'll kind of interview you and figure out what kind of experience you have, what kind of certifications you have. And then based on basically those two things, they will either classify you as a heavy equipment operator or a just regular equipment operator. Um, and then from there, that's how you can sign the books, the out of work books, either as a heavy equipment or an equipment. And then obviously they'll probably tell you, hey, if, you, if you're just equipment and you wanna become a heavy equipment, you're gonna have to get these certifications and blah, 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 blah. Those are things that you will discuss with the union hall to become a operator at the union hall that's a meeting that you have to set up all you really have to do is either go to that union hall or call that union hall and let them know hey i'm an operator non-union have x amount of experience i want to become an iww operator how do i do this and from there they'll they'll help you question number four what does it take to prove i know how to operate certain equipment so that i can sign on higher out of work books. This question is kind of confusing and it's worded kind of weirdly, but this goes back to the question I was just talking about. What does it take to prove I know how to operate certain equipment is when you want to become an operator within the IBW, like I said, you'll set that meeting up. Uh, the IBW, the, the, the local business manager or whoever, the dispatcher, whoever at the hall is going to help you, they'll let you know. They'll be the ones to decide, hey, well, with your equipment certifications, with your experience, you are able to be a heavy equipment operator or uh, just an equipment operator. That's up to between you and that union hall. So if they decide that, hey, you have the proper experience and certifications to be a heavy equipment operator, that's what they're going to allow you to sign the books as a heavy equipment operator. So if a uh, there's a job going on or if a company needs a heavy equipment operator, then they call the people on the out of work books for heavy equipment operators. Now, when you say sign on higher out of works books, you're gonna be signing book three, maybe book two, depending on the union hall, maybe even book four. It's kind of different everywhere else in the country. This is where it goes back to just calling the union hall and ask them, telling them your experience and what you want to do because it's not the same across the board across the United States. Every different union hall is kind of operated differently. So it's up to you if you want to become an operator within the IBW is to call the hall that you want to work out of and ask them these questions. And he says in here, he called and asked the IBW and they give him broad answers. And I called and asked a couple different IBW halls and this is what they've told me so I could kind of you know, make this video and help those of you who maybe want to become an operator in IBW. So to become, be able to sign on a higher out of a workbook, I'm assuming he's probably talking about becoming, like being able to sign 
book one or book two. Book one is for local hands. So let's just say he is uh, lives in Seattle, Washington. Uh, he'll sign book uh, IBW Local 77 book as either book three or book four. Book, I'm not exactly sure up there, but he'll just have to ask the hall and see what they have to say about, hey, I wanna become an operator. And then he'll sign the books there. And then as, when you start working more hours, you will be able to earn the experience to be able to sign book one or book two in other halls that are outside of your local hall where you first started working as an operator and you get quote unquote indentured or you originally start paying your dues. So there's a few different variables that you kind of have to think about. Um, and a lot of these answers come from talking directly to that union hall where you want to start working. Question number five, would working as an operator give me a better chance at landing a lineman apprenticeship? Yes, it definitely will. If your ultimate goal is to become a lineman and get into a lineman position or a lineman uh, apprenticeship, any work inside the IBW, uh, whether that be a substation tech or a groundman or a operator, any work experience within the IBW, working on a lineman crew, doing work around the lineman trade is going to help you. It's gonna get you hours towards credit. It could be depending on the apprenticeship you apply with. But they see that experience when you apply, when you do interview. They see that experience, oh, hey, you were an operator for a year, two years, three years, however long you're an operator for outside of the IBW. And if you get into the IBW, they'll see, oh, hey, you know, you've been an IBW member for X amount of years. You have X amount of years of experience as an IBW operator and blah, 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 blah. All that stuff will definitely help you when it comes to becoming an apprentice in the lineman trade. That experience is highly valuable. And they'll see that as, hey, you know, you've been a member for a long time. You've been working around line crews, online crews, on these jobs. So you have experience. And that stuff is very valuable. And that will help you in your directory to becoming a lineman apprentice and then ultimately become a lineman if that's what your goal is to do. So, yes, becoming an operator can give you get you a better chance at becoming an apprentice lineman. So last question, number six. How do you stay working? My only real hang up and not going in is that I don't understand how to stay working if projects come to an end. Would I sign out of workbooks in multiple locals? Yes, honestly, that's how you stay working. Um, which way I see a lot of operators stay working is they build connections uh, within like either a company or with certain like supervisors or general foremans to where mainly transmission jobs because that's where operators are used the most are on like big jobs like that. So being able to do some networking, you know, that one job that you, you get on a transmission job or whatever kind of job is if you're able to show prove that, Hey, you're actually worth the crap as an operator and that job comes to an end, but there's another job starting, you know, a month later or however much later or different area and that GF can refer you or a supervisor's like, hey, this guy's heck of a good operator. Um, there's a job going on, you know, in California or Nevada or wherever, and they need a couple operators. Like, do you want to go? If your reputation is good, that's how I see operators continue to stay working. Now, traveling might be part of it. And the other thing is like, if that job comes to an end, but you are you are a good operator, you know what you're doing, you do know how to do maybe groundman skills, groundman work, uh, so you, you're able to be proficient in that area of work when it comes to working on a lineman crew, you might even stay as an operator and be kind of like a glorified groundman of sense. You know, you might be basically working as a groundman, but you're an operator and you stay working that way because you show true value and you're a good worker, good operator, you know what you're doing, X, Y, Z, your, rep your reputation's really good. That's how I see a lot of operators stay working. But yes, if you are on a job, you get laid off, job comes to an end um, and you wanna stay working, the, your best thing is to do is do sign out of work books in, lo in multiple locals, you know, so. That's kind of the best way you can go around and sign books everywhere. But as soon as you take a call out of one local as an operator, you gotta take your name off all the other locals you signed in so you're not double booking. Um, that's something you do not wanna do. 
inside the union is double book, be working and have your name on out of work books at different locals. So yes, you stay working by either having a really good reputation and you're a really good operator that they want to keep around or you sign locals everywhere and then you get a job somewhere else that obviously requires traveling. So that's something that you have to be prepared for and want to do. So if you want to become an IBW operator, hopefully you can learn from these questions, help you kind of in that path to becoming an operator inside the IBW and getting started and building a career within the union, um, you know, and if your goal is to become a lineman apprentice and become a lineman, this is a great place to start. If you have operator experience and you have certifications like your class A CDL, your crane certifications and what other certifications that are good to have in the operator's world, by all means, I think it's a great opportunity career to have inside the IBW. With that being said, with Blue Collar EDU, I'm here to expose, teach, educate you about blue collar career opportunities and things that'll help you get started in a skilled trade. Becoming an operator in IBW is a great opportunity and I think you just go for it. I don't think you'll regret it because heavy equipment operators make a lot of the time the same amount as an IBW journeyman lineman, which is, can be a lot of money. With that being said, I'll catch you on episode 15 of CTQ.